All right, now we know how to calculate the power traveling in an electromagnetic plane wave. The expression for the time average power we came up with, shown here, for a plane wave, you can see it includes an alpha, the attenuation constant. So this expression can take into account the attenuation of the electromagnetic signal as it's propagating through a lossy material. So then the question is, does this, does the ionosphere attenuate our propagating electromagnetic signal? Or can we just set alpha equal to zero? You can pause the video if you like. Well, we need to know if the ionosphere behaves more like a lossless material, a low loss dielectric, or a good conductor. What do you think? Well, you might remember at the beginning of today's lecture, I mentioned that the ionosphere is ionized it's an ionized region of the atmosphere with lots of free electrons. And indeed, as in conductors, where there is ohmic heating as a result of the electrons colliding with other atoms in the conductor, in the ionosphere, there is going to be signal loss due to the collisions of electrons with other electrons, ions, and molecules. Especially in this lower D region of the ionosphere, where the air density is high, and there's going to be a lots of collisions with air molecules. The amount of attenuation will depend on the density of the electrons, usually written as Ne, and also the collision frequency of the electrons, how often they collide. Note that the ions will also respond to electromagnetic waves, but since the electrons have a much smaller mass, the force induced on the ions will be much smaller, meaning that they will contribute less to the attenuation of the propagating signal. So as a result, we're mostly going to be concerned about the electrons in the ionosphere, these electrons with a smaller mass. The plot on the right part of this slide shows how the density of the electrons changes with altitude in the ionosphere, and how the electron density changes depends on the time of day, midnight, and here is noon. And then also it can depend on the solar conditions. So this is from solar minimum and solar maximum. And here are the D and E and F regions that which you saw on the previous slide. To simplify the calculation of how much of the power is absorbed, people often use what's called a total electron content, TEC, total electron content where they integrate all the electrons throughout the ionosphere along the entire propagation path from the satellite to the ground. On the left side of this slide right here is an example plot of the average total electron content observed in different parts of the world. Now, as you can see on this slide, we want to make sure we use a total electron content for our exact propagation path, which is at an angle here, so it doesn't propagate straight downwards. They call this slant total electron content. Take out your in-class project notebooks and write something down about whether the ionosphere will attenuate our propagating signal and what causes the attenuation of that signal. Now there are other ways that our signal can attenuate, um, but the electron collisions is usually the biggest contributor.